While he's settled into a life lived mainly in California, Richard's thoughts, especially when he's writing, often turn to home. You know, I've always written about England, really. Um, Britain. As a writer, you kind of carry the landscape around with you. Because I'm not a beach boy. Somehow it doesn't sit right with me to use this as the landscape for whatever the drama is. Um, somehow I have to take the characters and put them back into a landscape I understand. I'm a writer from a tradition. Traditional models are, are very good because it's such distilled music. You're taking a story and, and you're following it through using ballad language, you know, this very bright language. Says Red Molly to James, that's a fine motorbike. A girl could feel special on any such like. Says James to Red Molly, my hat's off to you. It's a Vincent Black Lightning 1952. But I've seen you at the corners and cafes, it seems. Red hair and black leather, my favorite color scheme. And he pulled her on behind. And down to Box Hill. Let it ride. Vincent Black Lightning is a racing specification bike. When I was a kid, that was always the, the exotic bike. That was always the one, the one you went, oh, wow. I've always been looking for uh, English ideas that, that didn't sound corny, that still had, had some r romance to them, ar around which you could pin a song. And this song started uh, w with the motorcycle. It started with the Vincent. It was a good lodestone around which the song could revolve. Oh, he reached for her hand and he slipped her the keys. Said, I've got no further use for these. I see angels and aerials in leather and chrome swooping down from heaven to carry me home. And he gave her one last kiss and died And he gave her as Vincent A tried Finding myself as a solo performer, um, you know, I really had to do some work You're on! Well, yeah, I had to be the front man, which is okay. Uh... Hello? I'm over here, hello. Richard was always the quiet person at the back. It's so amazing that he now holds the audience in the palm of his hand. Mother and I can never get over it. We never can, can believe that that's the shy, the shy Richard. It's like a state of grace in a way. You get to be as light and as effortless seeming and as charming and as not weighed down by your demons as you know yourself really to be. There's a lot to carry, but... He's roaming through this catalog of profoundly um, dark and disturbing music in a lot of ways and just sort of lightly tiptoeing through it and picking, picking a dark flower here and another a black rose there. This is a new recipe to be alive. The listener is a very important part of, of, of the process. You want a mirror there. You, you, want, you want some criticism, and you, you want some love back. You know, you, I think you're doing it for love. Enough praise to, to just keep you floating. You know, enough lubrication to to to, to keep uh, the, the joints oiled and, and uh, keep the wheel turning. By the 1990s, Richard was getting appreciation from many quarters. The head of Capitol Records was a fan and signed Richard to the label, where he recorded five albums over the next decade. During this time, Richard was also nominated for a Grammy, as well as being honored back in Britain with an Ivor Novello Award for his outstanding achievements in songwriting.
he goes deeper and uh, says more original things than most songwriters. And I don't like to compare any songwriter to another. You know, there's Randy Newman and Paul Simon and Dylan, and I think Richard Thompson's working at least on that level. I've been in love with those ballads of Richard since I first heard him. Dimming of the Day, which I've sung, is one of the most beautiful songs and heartbreaking songs I've recorded. Now Bonnie Birds have He's funny and he's not self-involved and, you know, loves his life being a dad. He's a beacon for people that are uh, traversing the more uh, occupational hazard part of rock and roll. Richard seemed to have all the fun without all the dastardly results the rest of us had to live through. I'm on the road tomorrow and uh, I haven't got any shirts to wear, so I do a bit of laundry. I don't see him hanging out at the scene too much when there's big parties with Don Henley, you know what I mean? He's a grown-up. I've been over there, and it's a lovely, beautiful garden. I've learned to be loud with my plant choices. Pastorally English, pastoral look uh, doesn't quite work yet. Things pop into your head. It's one of those activities. But ideas come to you because you're not, you're not thinking about it. I think a lot of the problem is uh, switching your brain off. Once you switch your brain off, then Good things happen. Unlike several rock and rollers one could mention, Richard follows a regular work routine. I live the way I live. Creatively, to be more efficient, I, I get up really early. Um, that's age as well, that's just getting old. But it's very convenient for me um, because, you know, I can work longer hours. It's all work in progress. We don't, we don't discuss things while they're being processed. Otherwise, you can, you can talk something into the, the dustbin, so I won't. We don't talk about it. He does that job, but we refer to it as his job, his work. I never even say, you know, how's the music going, honey, or anything. We just don't, we don't talk about it. And it's because we, I respect that, and we have that distance, because we don't have to live the music all the time. I think that that's you know, what's worked for 20 years. There's times when I want to get some work finished, uh, so I'll do office hours, eight to four, nine to five, and plough through stuff. You know, sometimes that's a month or two months. My family doesn't like me during those periods. Um, my, my family finds me moody and withdrawn and difficult to deal with. Living with a creative guy, well, it has its, you know, positives and negatives. It's not like living with John Denver. Now, of course, I hear little snippets of it around the house. I might hear something, but I never even admit that I'm listening to that. Like perfume in the air. I'd love to hear those songs in progress. <laughs> it would be great. I'd love to have, you know, a little microphone into, into what he hears. I don't know what he hears in there. What, did you switch that on? It's me, I don't like it, don't like listening to me. If you're a writer, you know, you, you, you live in society, but you're kind of on the edge of it. You have to find your source material. Your source material is, is you know, the, the people down the street and uh, people across the road and, and the people in the newspaper, as well as all the stuff that you remember, all, all, the, all the past social situations that you've been in. Scary. So yeah, you need fuel, and for fuel, you, you need to be out there with your eyes open. For me? No, the man you're filming. Oh, me? I'm not a big personality, no, I'm a very small personality. Well, I don't know. I'm a musician. What kind of musician? Uh, folk music. Oh, like Peter, Paul, and Mary? That kind of thing, exactly, yes. It, it doesn't look passionate. He's a quiet guy. 